Imagine for a moment, you're walking through a dense fog. Every direction looks the same, blurred and uncertain. That's life sometimes, right? We find ourselves in these seasons where everything seems veiled, our vision for the future clouded. But what if I told you, in the midst of that fog, there's a path being formed? A path you can't see just yet, but it's there, meticulously laid out by someone who sees everything clearly, even when we see nothing. This, my friends, is how God works in our lives. Today, my friends, we are looking at seven powerful steps that can bring transformational change in our lives that we have been trying that we cannot. And I am going to release a very powerful prayer for you in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Kindly watch till the end. Believe and open your heart to receive the blessings that comes with this prayer. Please like, comment, share this video with others. Leave your prayer requests and we will pray with you. Consider the story of Joseph in the Bible, found in Genesis 37 to 50. Joseph's life was anything but straightforward. Sold into slavery by his own brothers, falsely accused and thrown into prison, Joseph's path was shrouded in uncertainty and despair. Yet, through all these hardships, God was laying out a path for Joseph, leading him to eventually become the second most powerful man in Egypt, saving many from famine, including his own family. Joseph's story teaches us that even when our situation looks bleak, God is at work, orchestrating events for our good and his glory. Or think about Moses. Here was a man who, after fleeing Egypt as a fugitive, spent 40 years in the desert, tending to sheep. It might have seemed like his life was going nowhere, but God was preparing him for something extraordinary, to lead the Israelites out of slavery and towards the promised land. Moses' journey reminds us that God's timing and paths are not always as immediate or as clear as we might hope, but they are always perfect in fulfilling his plans for us. The New Testament offers the example of Paul. Once a fierce persecutor of Christians, his life took a 180-degree turn on the road to Damascus, Acts 9. Blinded by a light from heaven and confronted by Jesus himself, Paul's literal inability to see reflected his spiritual fog before encountering Christ. Yet, in this moment of complete vulnerability and confusion, God was paving a path for Paul to become one of the most influential apostles, spreading the gospel across the world. Paul's transformation illustrates how God can turn our most disorienting moments into the beginnings of a purposeful journey. Point 1. Have you tried to change? The journey of change is a road often walked yet seldom easy. It's about transformation, both in heart and action. In the tapestry of human experience, the threads of desire, effort, failure, and success are intricately woven together, creating a picture of our quest for improvement. But have you tried to change? Really change? This isn't just about swapping a bad habit for a good one. It's about a fundamental shift in how we live, think, and relate to God and others. Take, for instance, the story of Zacchaeus, the tax collector, in Luke 19 verses 1 to 10. This was a man despised by his community, not just for his occupation, but for the greed and dishonesty that defined it. Yet, when Jesus called him down from that sycamore tree, Zacchaeus didn't just promise to turn over a new leaf. He pledged to give half of his possessions to the poor and repay fourfold anyone he cheated. This wasn't a minor tweak to his lifestyle. It was a seismic shift in his identity, driven by an encounter with Christ. Zacchaeus shows us that true change, transformational change, is rooted in a radical reevaluation of our values and actions in the light of God's presence. Or consider Paul, once known as Saul of Tarsus, whose life story is scattered throughout the New Testament, including Acts 9. Here was a man whose change of heart was so profound that it even came with a change of name. Paul's transformation from a persecutor of Christians to one of Christianity's most ardent apostles is nothing short of miraculous. Yet, it's also deeply relatable. It speaks to the power of divine intervention to completely flip our worldviews and life paths. Paul's journey underscores that true change often requires us to let go of who we thought we were in order to become who God intends us to be. Both these stories, and many others in the Bible, highlight a crucial point. 
Change is less about our own willpower and more about our willingness to submit to God's work in our lives. It echoes the wisdom found in Philippians 2 verse 13. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. This suggests that our attempts to change shouldn't be grounded solely in self-effort, but in a partnership with the divine, allowing God's spirit to guide, empower, and refine us. This divine human collaboration in the process of change is beautifully encapsulated in the concept of sanctification, a theological term used to describe the process of becoming more like Christ. It's a journey that acknowledges our human frailties while celebrating the transformative power of God's grace. As 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18 puts it, And we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. This passage reminds us that change is not just about altering our behavior, but about reflecting a greater glory, not ours, but God's. So, have you tried to change? If your efforts have felt like treading water, remember, the essence of biblical change isn't just in trying harder, but in drawing closer to God allowing his love and truth to permeate every aspect of our lives. It's in recognizing that, while the process might be fraught with challenges, we are not alone. God is both the architect and the builder of our transformation, guiding us through each step, reshaping us from the inside out. 2. Change is a process. Change is more than just a one-time decision. It's a journey, a process of growth and transformation that unfolds over time. In the Bible, we see numerous examples of individuals who underwent profound changes in their lives, showing us that change is indeed possible. One such example is the story of Saul, who later became known as the Apostle Paul. In Acts 9, we read about Saul's dramatic encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus. Saul was a zealous persecutor of Christians, but in an instant, everything changed. This encounter marked the beginning of a transformative process in Saul's life. He went from being a persecutor to becoming one of the greatest proponents of Christianity, spreading the gospel far and wide. Paul's life reminds us that change often begins with a single encounter or decision, but continues as a lifelong journey of growth and renewal. Another example is the story of Zacchaeus in Luke 19 verses 1 to 10. Zacchaeus was a tax collector, despised by his community for his dishonesty and greed. But when Jesus entered his life, Zacchaeus experienced a radical transformation. He not only repented of his sins, but also committed to making amends for the wrongs he had done. Zacchaeus' story illustrates that true change involves a change of heart and a willingness to make things right with God and others. Scripture also teaches us that change is possible through the power of God's Spirit working in us. In Philippians 2 verse 13, we are reminded that it is God who works in us, both to will and to act according to his good purpose. This means that as we surrender our lives to God and allow his spirit to work in us, we can experience transformation from the inside out. Change is indeed a process, and it often involves ups and downs, victories and setbacks. But as we continue to seek God and his guidance, we can trust that he is faithful to complete the work he has begun in us. Philippians 1 verse 6. So, if you're longing for change in your life, take heart and trust in God's power to transform you. Remember that change is possible, and it begins with a willingness to surrender to God and His plans for your life. 3. Being molded by Jesus. Being molded by Jesus Christ is like being shaped by the hands of a master craftsman. In the Bible, we see how Jesus transformed the lives of ordinary people, molding them into vessels of his love and grace. One example is the story of Peter, a rough and impulsive fisherman whom Jesus called to be his disciple, Matthew 4 verses 18 to 20. Despite Peter's shortcomings and failures, Jesus saw potential in him and patiently molded him into a bold and influential leader. Through Jesus' teaching, guidance, and example, Peter grew in faith and courage, eventually becoming a key figure in the early Christian church. Another example is the transformation of Mary Magdalene, who was once possessed by seven demons, Luke 8 verse 2. 
Jesus freed her from bondage and restored her to wholeness. Mary became one of Jesus' most devoted followers, accompanying him throughout his ministry and witnessing his crucifixion and resurrection. Her life bears witness to the transformative power of Jesus' love and mercy. Scripture teaches us that as followers of Jesus, we are called to be transformed by him. In Romans 12 verse 2, we are urged not to conform to the pattern of this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. This transformation happens as we allow Jesus to shape our thoughts, attitudes, and actions according to his will. Being molded by Jesus is a lifelong process that requires humility, surrender, and obedience. Just as a potter carefully shapes clay on a wheel, Jesus shapes us through his word, his spirit, and the circumstances of our lives. He molds us into vessels of his love, mercy, and grace, equipping us to fulfill his purposes and bring glory to his name. So, if you feel like a work in progress, take heart. Jesus is the ultimate craftsman, and he is not finished with you yet. Trust in his plan for your life, and allow him to continue molding you into the person he created you to be. Remember that being molded by Jesus is a privilege and a blessing, leading to a life of purpose, fulfillment, and eternal significance. 4. God's Desire for You God's desire for you is like a gentle whisper, calling you into a life filled with purpose, joy, and fulfillment. Throughout the Bible, we see God's heart for His people and His longing for them to experience His love and blessings. One clear example of God's desire for his people is found in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, where God declares, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. This verse reveals God's desire to bless his people and to lead them into a bright and hopeful future. Another example is seen in the life of King David. Despite David's flaws and failures, God described him as a man after my own heart, Acts 13 verse 22. This shows God's desire for his people to seek him wholeheartedly, to love him deeply, and to walk in his ways. Scripture also teaches us that God desires for us to experience his love and to share it with others. In Ephesians 2 verse 10, we are reminded that we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. This verse emphasizes God's desire for us to live lives of purpose and to make a positive impact in the world around us. Ultimately, God's greatest desire for you is to know Him intimately and to experience His love and salvation through Jesus Christ. In 2 Peter 3 verse 9, we read that God is not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. This verse highlights God's desire for all people to turn to Him, receive His forgiveness, and experience eternal life with Him. So, if you ever wonder about God's desire for you, know that it is rooted in His unconditional love and grace. He longs for you to walk closely with Him, to trust in His plans for your life, and to experience the abundant life that He offers. May you embrace God's desire for you, and live each day in the light of his love and purpose. 5. The Problem of Guilt The problem of guilt weighs heavy on many hearts, like a burden too heavy to bear. In the Bible, guilt is a real struggle faced by humanity, but it's also met with God's solution of forgiveness and redemption. One example of guilt in the Bible is seen in the story of Adam and Eve in Genesis 3. After they disobeyed God and ate the forbidden fruit, they experienced shame and guilt for the first time. They tried to hide from God, covering themselves with fig leaves to conceal their shame. This story illustrates how sin leads to guilt and separates us from God's presence. Another example is the story of King David and his affair with Bathsheba, followed by his attempt to cover up his sin by arranging for her husband's death, 2 Samuel 11-12. After being confronted by the prophet Nathan, David acknowledged his guilt and repented of his sin. His heartfelt prayer of confession and repentance is recorded in Psalm 51. Despite his grievous sins, David found forgiveness and restoration in God's mercy. 
Scripture teaches us that the problem of guilt can only be fully resolved through God's forgiveness. In 1 John 1 verse 9, it says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. This verse assures us that when we acknowledge our sins and turn to God in repentance, He is faithful to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Furthermore, in Romans 8 verse 1, it says, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. This verse reminds us that through Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven, and we are set free from the guilt and condemnation that once held us captive. So, if you're struggling with guilt, know that there is hope in God's forgiveness. Confess your sins, turn to Him in repentance, and receive His grace and mercy. Remember that God's love is greater than your guilt, and through Jesus Christ, you can find freedom and restoration. 6. What is grace? Grace is like a warm embrace from a loving parent, offering forgiveness, acceptance, and unmerited favor. In the Bible, grace is described as God's undeserved kindness and mercy towards humanity. One of the most famous passages about grace is found in Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 9, where it says, For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. This verse highlights that salvation, the forgiveness of sins and the gift of eternal life, comes to us not through our own efforts or merits, but as a free gift from God, given out of His abundant grace. Another powerful example of grace is seen in the story of the prodigal son in Luke 15 verses 11 to 32. Despite squandering his inheritance and living a life of rebellion, the son returns home expecting judgment but is instead met with open arms by his father, who welcomes him back with love and forgiveness. This parable beautifully illustrates God's grace towards us, no matter how far we may have strayed or how unworthy we may feel. Scripture also teaches us that grace empowers us to live transformed lives. In 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9, Paul writes, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. This verse reminds us that God's grace is not only sufficient to save us, but also to strengthen us and help us overcome our weaknesses and challenges. Ultimately, grace is at the heart of the Christian faith. It is the foundation of our relationship with God and the source of our hope and confidence. As Romans 5 verses 20 to 21 declares, but where sin increased, grace increased all the more so that, just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This passage highlights the abundance of God's grace, which far surpasses our sin and leads us into eternal life through Jesus Christ. So, what's grace? It's God's extravagant love poured out on us, freely given, and available to all who receive it by faith. It's the essence of our salvation, the power to transform our lives, and the promise of eternal life with Him. May we never cease to marvel at the beauty and depth of God's amazing grace. 7. How to enjoy life whilst going through change. Finding joy in the midst of change is like discovering a hidden treasure in the midst of life's challenges. In the Bible, we see principles and examples that can guide us in experiencing joy even as we navigate through seasons of change. One key principle is found in Philippians 4 verse 4, where it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, Rejoice. This verse reminds us that our joy is not dependent on our circumstances, but on our relationship with the Lord. No matter what changes we may be facing, we can find joy in knowing that God is with us and that His love and faithfulness never change. Another important principle is gratitude. In 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 16 to 18, it says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Even in the midst of change, we can cultivate a spirit of gratitude by focusing on the blessings we have received and the ways that God is working in our lives. Scripture also encourages us to trust in God's plan for our lives. In Jeremiah 29 verse 11, it says, 
For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. This verse reminds us that even when we don't understand the changes happening around us, we can trust that God has a good plan for us and that He is working all things together for our good. Additionally, we can find joy in serving others and sharing God's love with those around us. In Acts 20 verse 35, it says, It is more blessed to give than to receive. When we focus on helping and blessing others, we not only bring joy to their lives but also experience joy ourselves as we reflect God's love and generosity. So, if you're in a season of change and uncertainty, remember these principles from Scripture. Rejoice in the Lord, cultivate gratitude, trust in God's plan, and look for opportunities to serve others. By doing so, you can experience joy and fulfillment even as you navigate through the changes of life. Mark 11 verse 24 says, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. Join me as we go to the Lord in prayer. Open your heart and believe so that the blessings of this prayer will come to you. Say this prayer with faith. Dear Heavenly Father, We humbly come before you today. You are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You, the Lord, you created the earth and the heavens, and all that is in them. I give you all the praise and glory. Thank you God for everything you have done in my life. I'm grateful for the good things and even the tough times. You've been with me through it all, and for that, I say thank you from the bottom of my heart. God of mercy and compassion, please look with pity on me. I know I have sinned against you. I ask for your forgiveness. Father, Lord, have mercy on my mistakes and failures. Every mistake I have done in word, action, and deeds, Father, forgive me. For your word clearly says in 1 John 1 verse 9, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Thank you Lord Jesus for forgiving me. Now in the name of Jesus I declare the power of God against any work of the enemy. Every secret agenda the devil and his cohorts have plotted against me be destroyed in Jesus' mighty name. Father, your word said Christ was manifested that the works of the enemy might be destroyed. Every work of the enemy against my marriage, my job, my business, my career, my family, and children, be destroyed in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name, I declare fruitfulness in every area of my life. Let the power of Christ touch my life so I bear fruit. I am fruitful in my life, in my ministry, in my marriage, in my business, in my career, in my job, and in my finances, for the Lord gives us power to make wealth. Let prosperity be my portion in Jesus' name. I will not lack but have an abundance. Lord, I want to serve you with all my heart. Anything that hinders my service, Father, deliver me. God, save me from myself, save me from people who will not lead me to you, save me from desires which are not godly, things which are not in line with your word. Father, help me obey your word. Sometimes the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Lord, make me strong, make me fervent in you. Restore unto me, Lord, the joy of my salvation. Father, restore all the things I have lost, either by my ignorance or carelessness. You said in your word that the years the locust has eaten in our lives, you will restore us. Thank you, Lord, for restoring me, my family, my marriage, my career, and my ministry. Father, you sent forth your word to heal our diseases and sicknesses. I declare your healing from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. Father, heal my family, friends, and loved ones. 
Let your healing be their portion too. I boldly declare that I am a child of God. I walk in victory through faith. I am the head and never the tail. I am what God says I am in Jesus' mighty name. I boldly declare Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He mocketh me to lie down in green pastures, he letteth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul, he letteth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies, thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you, my Father God, for hearing my prayer and answering my prayer. Amen. As this message has blessed you, type the word Amen in the comment section and share with us your testimony too in the comment section. In the name of Jesus Christ, all these blessings have come upon you now. Beloved, help us spread the gospel of Christ and reach more people all over the world by liking this video and sharing this message with your family, friends, and loved ones. We really appreciate your great support. We plead with you to subscribe so you can receive more videos that will revive your spirit and uplift your life. Christ came that all people will be saved. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, this is the right time to do so. Say this after me. Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and because of me, you came to die on the cross of Calvary. Father, forgive me of all my sins. Today, I boldly declare that you are my Lord and personal Savior. Come into my heart and lead me. As you have said this prayer, congratulations you have been born again. Please look for a pastor in a Bible-believing church and tell him you have given your life Christ. You will need to fellowship with other believers to learn about your new life. Prayer is a very powerful tool God has given us. With prayer our problems receive solution and we get comforted by God. Please leave your prayer request in the comment section. We are constantly interceding on your behalf before God. Trust me friends, our God will answer your every prayer request. Sometimes we may not reply to your prayer request in the comment section, but that does not mean we are not praying for you. We have you at heart in your requests. May the grace of our Jesus Christ and the love of God be with you now and forevermore. Amen.